So let's walk through the eDiscovery, the core eDiscovery tool in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center. Now eDiscovery is something that we'll normally use when the organization is involved in a legal case. And there is a process of discovery where both sides have to turn over any information they have related to the case. And Microsoft's implementation of that, this is a pretty big issue by the way when we're dealing with legal cases. So Microsoft's implementation or tool to help us manage that is eDiscovery. So if we come down to under solutions, we'll find eDiscovery. And when you expand it, you'll see two things, core and advanced. We'll walk through the core eDiscovery. Now, I've already got an existing case that's in the process of closing. So we're going to ignore that and I'm going to create a new case. Now, everything revolves around the individual cases. So before you can do anything else with eDiscovery, you have to create your case. So I'm going to create a new case and we're going to set a name for the case and then a case description. So I'll just put those in real quick. Only the name is actually required. The description is not, but it's helpful. So we're going to save the case and we now have a new case that is currently active. So I'm going to click on my case and this is where I'm going to find all of my information. So home, which tells me when the case was created, what the current status is. And this is also where I'll go to close or delete the case. Now you can close the case. It's going to take a little while to delete the case because when you close it, it shuts down everything that was related to it. And that's going to take a little while. So that's why you saw the one that I had, which is still in the process of closing, even though I told it to close about 20 minutes ago. So let's jump over these other three and go to settings first. And this is where we're going to put our detailed information. So case information, we'll set the case number, the case uh, case name, name, number, description, status. Let's hit select and we'll see that all here. It's an e case type is eDiscovery. It's currently active. We see the name and the uh, description. And then under more options is where we can go to close or delete the case. The other thing we're going to need to do though is we're going to need to assign access and permissions to the case. And that's going to be here. So we'll click on select and this is going to tell us which members or role groups have access to this case. So we can add additional members here. That's going to be people who have access to this case. Imagine your legal team or something like that. In fact, you may want to create a role group for your legal team. So you can just add the role group and then your legal team would have access to it and legal team or whoever else needed to be part of that. So that's where you're going to assign permissions to access this particular case. All right, once we've got the case set up and the permissions assigned, then we'll work with searches and holds. Now, this works exactly like the search that we did in a previous video, the content search tool. So it's the same thing, search, search by ID list, export. So we'll use this to search for information. So if we were doing a course related to Bassett, we might do a search for anything related to Bassett. And this is where we're trying to just find the information that's going to be relevant to the case. Now that's part of it. We need to find the information, but the second thing is we need to hold that information. So we need to make sure that that information isn't deleted and that's what the hold is for right here. So also remember just like other searches, right? When we create a new search and we can rerun that search later on. Like I said, exactly the same way. When we create a hold, what we do is we create a search that then locks that information so it can't be deleted. So I'm going to create a hold and we're going to hold Bassett information. I'm not going to set a description. So which locations do we want? Exchange mailboxes, exchange public folders, uh, SharePoint sites. I'm going to do SharePoint sites and... Uh, exchange mailboxes. And then I can include specific users, groups, or teams. I can choose specific SharePoint sites. Notice that none are excluded, which is probably going to be a good thing for an eDiscovery hold. So we'll click Next. And then the query. Now, this is the information that we're actually looking for. So I'm going to search for anything related to Bassett. And this is going to be really similar to the search as well. But here I can add some additional conditions, just like if I'm searching for email. 
add some additional conditions if I need them, do multiple keywords if I need them, click next, and then this will summarize my hold. So it's gonna, the name is Bassett Information. It's gonna search through anything in the Exchange Email, SharePoint sites, Exchange Public Folders. Anything that includes the word Bassett, it's gonna create a hold on that. And what it does is it holds that information, keeps it from being deleted until the hold is released, which normally happens after the case has been settled. So I'm going to click Done here, and we'll see this Bassett information. If we click on it, it's going to show us our hold, and we can edit or delete the hold. This is going to show us what it applies to. It's currently still running the hold, and that's going to take it a little while. So these are not quick, so be patient with it. So it's going to show us how many mailboxes, how many sites, our hold statistics, which we can update uh, later on if needed. And then when it was last modified and the current state. Now if you uncheck, it says on pending, which means it's on, but it's not completely active yet because it's still going through and processing information. I can uncheck that to turn that hold off. When you do, it is going to throw a warning saying, hey, if you turn this uh, off this hole, the content that was being held might be permanently deleted. Are you sure you want to do this? It only affects this hold, not any other holds that are related to the case. I'm just saying, no, I don't want to turn that hold off at the moment. I'm going to let it set, and we'll just let it run. It's actually going to take longer than we're going to run this video. But here's where you'll find all of those different holds, and you can do different holds holding different levels of information, or information from different queries. So that sets your case up. Now when your case closes, so legal issue has been resolved, then you can come back in and turn off all the holds. You can get rid of all the searches. The searches don't actually hold data, they're just here so you can go through and refine it again if you need to. And then back home is where you close the case and once everything is closed you may want to go ahead and hold it for a little while but once you are completely done you're never going to use this again then you can come through and delete the case the other thing I want you to see here is that we have an option to export so we can export data that uh, is related to this case as well so that is Core eDiscovery in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center.